Hello and welcome everybody to a new tier list video where in this one we will be going over every single spell in Heroes of Mana Magic 3 Horn of the Abyss. We'll be looking over the latest versions, some of them are nerfed by the way. Um, I'll be telling you the changes in Horn of the Abyss and I'll be ranking them D to S tier and I'll be explaining my reasons behind why I think they belong in the tier that I give them, okay? So without further ado, let's hop right into it. We have a lot of spells to go over, okay? All 69 of them. Then, first of all, we have the air shield. Air shield is actually deceptively powerful, but that doesn't see any use. Because, uh, namely, there's way better ways to deal with ranged creatures. By the way, for anyone that isn't aware, it um, reduces the... Uh, it dramatically reduces the ranged uh, damage taken by your creatures at expert level for uh, by, by all your creatures. It's actually pretty good if you can utilize it properly. But, like, there's too many good alternatives in ways that you can actually deal with shooters, okay? It's way better for the shooters to just not shoot rather than you tank the damage with air shield. And that's why it's actually pretty low on the tier list. It's almost never used, okay? Almost never. There's, like, a few exceptions. It is not unusable, though. So, it is C tier, in my opinion. Next up, we have one of the big boy spells, okay? Immediately. We have the anime dead. This is the foundation, the very foundation of the entire faction of Necropolis, okay? The entire faction is built upon this. Um, Anime Dead actually is the one of the most cost-efficient spells. It doesn't cost that much mana. You don't even need earth magic to sustain it. And it lets you keep your um, armies alive through many, many battles. It revives your undead. You don't need much investment, you get a lot of payout, it's pretty easy to get, it's, it, it, as it's tier 3. It's a really solid uh, spell that um, boosts the already strong faction of Necropolis even higher up. Like, the spell alone does wonders for the faction. Amazing. Super high. Uh, next up we have the Antimagic. Antimagic, um... It's like a very late game kind of scenario, okay? When the armies get ridiculous, okay, then you don't really cast uh, damaging spells anymore. And by that point, you end up casting Utility and Crowd Control. And Anti-Magic in that kind of phase is going to prevent your biggest stack from getting Crowd Controlled or Implode as well. Um, it's a very, very strong Utility spell. And on its own, it can activate some playstyles. For example, if you go in with Archangels and you Anti-Magic immediately, that can be like uh, the thing that you need to win, okay? Anti-Magic's uh, biggest use case is preventing counterplay, sealing in your win... So, with that in mind, despite its, being, its use case, it's actually being pretty low, as you don't often get to that kind of late game scenario where Anti-Magic is your best cast. When it is your best cast, it is your best cast by far, putting it in solidly in A tier, in my opinion. Next up, we have the Armageddon, one of the most meme spells, and one of the, one of the coolest spells in the set, really. At least I think so. Like, you unleash, you rain death upon everything in the battlefield, except for your Freedies, and that's what makes the fell so good, okay? There are certain units that you can abuse it with, namely the Fire Elemental, the Phoenix, the Freedie. Um, these units uh, do wonders with the Armageddon and can clear the entire map on, of its own, okay? So, because of that reason, it scores actually pretty high. Well, pretty high. I would say it's actually low A tier. Compared to other damaging spells, it is um, way harder to use. When you do use it, the payoff is higher, but using it is not that easy. Putting it in A tier, in my opinion. By the way, uh, one thing that I should also mention is that in Haunt the Abyss, it was nerfed. No longer does it get 50 damage per power. It is now down to 40 damage per power, making its destructive capabilities slightly less destructive. But it doesn't really change too much in terms of play, uh, gameplay, you know? So that's all it is. Next up, we have... Berserk. Berserk is um one of the... It's a very, very interesting spell, okay? It makes the entire school, uh, school of math, fire school of magic really, really wild because Berserk can actually win unwinnable battles, like straight up unwinnable. But if you can bait the opponent into a big Berserk, you can actually crowd control a whole pack of creatures infinitely. And for that reason, it is very, very potent. Even if it doesn't usually get played, the threat of the spell being present 
makes people play vastly different. And I feel like it deserves a pretty good um, spot on the list. Putting it on A tier. Despite not seeing too much use. Um, it is a very well respected spell. Uh, next up we have the Bless. One of the biggest damage oriented spell casts of the entire game. I mean of the entire early game I should say. It enables some creatures to do a ludicrous amount of damage. Okay. Now the best faction to utilize this is the Conflux. Their damage ranges are so 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 high. Okay. The Air Elemental does 2 to 8 damage. I believe. So it does uh, 5 damage on average. A blessed elemental is going to be doing 8 damage every time, making it a very big percentage boost in damage. Bigger than you can get from most other sources of, of early game damage, okay? Because of that, it is a very decent spell cast. It's held back by the fact it's water magic, and water magic is um, not really preferable because of their limited late game use cases. Um, because it's held back by this, despite it being good in some early game niche scenarios, it is still B tier. So there we go. Next up we have the blind. Blind is amazing, okay? Blind is so good. Uh, let me tell you why. Usually when you go into endgame battles, uh, mages um, tend to be very very threatening with a spell cast, okay? And if you let them cast enough turns um, in a row, then you probably end up losing. So, the way that a might hero might keep up with a mage is by having them forced to trade spellcasts. Because you see, if you blind an enemy stack as a warrior, then they're effectively removed from the game, okay? Like, just straight up gone, and the opponent has to respond by using a cast of his own to wake them up. But if the mage hero is only using a spellcast to wake the creatures up, then he's not casting something else that's gonna be destroying the opponent, making it so you can uh, the so the mind hero might be able to force the mage hero to trade spell cast one to one, putting him at a significant advantage. The spell is always a threat. You can combo people out like really really good. Also, namely, I should also mention the fact that you can have a wait turn and then blind two stacks in a row while killing like some stragglers and put the opponent into an infinite damage deadlock and winning like. Pretty much unwinnable fights. The spell is uh, top of the list in my opinion. It is so good. It, I don't feel like it really, uh, sees that much play, but when it does, it's very, very significant. And the best part of it is that you don't need to in uh, invest into any school of magic to use it. So if your hero ends up being garbage, you know, he doesn't roll any good uh, schools of magic, he doesn't really have any, any way to cast well, they give him blind, and then he can actually compete even with good mages. And that is amazing. And the single spell actually activates that. It's really good. Next up, we have the Bloodlust. The Bloodlust, um... Seems kind of good, you know, it gives damage to all your melee creatures. That doesn't sound too bad, but then you think about it, and it's actually... You get 5 attack, okay? 5 attack is nice, but when you're investing into a basket of magic to get this, it's kind of bad. It doesn't do enough, okay? It is not unusable, but it is C tier, okay? Pretty bad, pretty bad. Next up, we have the Chain Lightning. One of the three, well, maybe four, big damaging spells of the game, okay? And it is really good. Uh, maybe better than some of the other ones in many scenarios. It does a very good straight up front loaded damage. And then it also kills some other things around it. Mm, it doesn't really need a lot of investment for it to be good. You don't really need air matters to activate this to be good. So even if you pick up an air book on like some earth magician. If he has decent power he'll be able to use it immediately to a very high potential. So because of this, because of its utility, the fact that you don't need a lot of investment to use it, uh, because of its strength, it is placed solidly at the top of A tier. Next up we have Clone. Clone is kind of the way for ability, okay? Where the armies are so ridiculous that, you know, cloning a stack is better than an implosion, then it is pretty good. But uh, in most scenarios, it's pretty bad. The only use case uh, is usually Eovashius, who can make two clones. Now, then you get some insane value. And Eovashius clone is like a um, whole tier of its own. But um, just that use case alone doesn't actually push it to be that good. I would say it is C tier. Mm, not as low as DC, though. Next up, we have the Counter Strike. It is. Hot steaming pile of garbage. I, I'm not, I'm sorry. This this 
you can maybe make some meme use case scenarios because you know you can like counter strike your vampires and they're like immune to damage because they reach them more with the, the retiles in some cases you know uh but <laughs> no it is um i would say it's detail mm. now granted it can be better than some of these other spells but um it is a true force spell, so it's not easy to get. It costs a lot of mana, and because of that, uh, using it is usually not worth it. If you have Bloodlust, then you would usually use it anyway, you know, just to get uh, that extra boost. It's not that much of a commitment to do it. Meanwhile, Anti Magic is a big commitment for like no payoff, so don't use it. <laughs> Avoid it. Um, delete it. I don't know. And next up, we have the Cure. Um, Cure is heavily underestimated. It is actually very usually used as a budget resurrection it can keep your big units afloat you know just enough hp do not actually lose a full unit and it can save you a lot of units in the long run if you're like low side hero can cast a cure he can actually do quite a bit with it it's a pretty good spell i would place it at uh, b there just below bless but still pretty good you don't need the water match to actually use it effectively as well. It can cure blinds uh, off. That's pretty useful. Salt spell. Salt spell. Next up we have Curse. Curse is the main seller of fire magics. It's really good. Okay. It makes the opponents deal minimum damage. And on top of that, it makes them deal one less than their minimum damage. Now that ends up being pretty funny because many units actually have two minimum damage making expert curse deal uh makes them deal one <laughs> damage a whole one damage from the unit every time um so some good use cases is almost every single creature bank griffins will be dealing i think two damage when expert curse that's like no damage you can just tank, tank it and take it very good for consoles very good for highs very good for pickets um uh, everything will deal really low damage it falls off later into the game when you start fighting higher tier creatures because they, their damage ranges are not that high and the one extra less damage is not as significant, of course. Uh, but in the early game, this is like the main use case of fire magics and it's pretty good. When you can use it, it's really good and very impactful. Uh, solid A tier. I say solid A tier, but I place it pretty low in the A tier anyway. Trust me. <laughs> uh, next up, we have the Death Ripple. Death Ripple is held back by its really really low power scaling okay it gets like no damage for power it has like no flat damage it has no damage whatsoever however however it has really good utility okay um this spell is mostly used to do a few things okay one it can kill the opponent's one stacks making so making so they have like may, maybe their only main stack so you could combo it with blind okay you have a wait turn then you death ripple off their one stacks and then you blind the main stack and then you can deadlock them into infinite damage combos really good for that um they can all be also be used with like septiana in the early game you scholar your other heroes death ripple you give them a white then you just death ripple a bunch of small fights in the early game and you get some snowball rolling. You get like the you flag the mines for free with like a single white. It's pretty good. Not bad. I do like playing that kind of way. It has some uses. Uh, but these uses are not enough to put it like very high. It's something that you always have to be aware of. I actually lost your death ripple. I attacked an opponent with one stacks only, having spells. Um and he then he I got like massively death rippled. Um, you know, I learned the hard way. I, I'm the kind of guy that will learn the hard way. <laughs> I did learn to respect it, but I, when you do respect it, it loses a lot of its um, surprise effectiveness. And it is, I think, um, low B tier. Next up, we have Destroying Dead. Destroying Dead is like Death Ripple, except it doesn't... <laughs> except that it's actually useless. Um, it doesn't have the... They're, it's not as easy to get because you don't have scholars starting with it, like Septiana. Um, then the use cases are way lower because most of the people don't roll in dead armies. And yeah, it is uh, a failure of a spell. It is nothing. I only cast it once in the campaign uh, when my, my one of my mines was flagged by... I mean, guarded by some skeletons and I had no army in the early game, so I took it with destroying dead. That was the only use case scenario for me. Uh, next up we have Dimension Door. 
one of the free control spells of the game, Fly DD Town Portal, and this is a whole, I mean, this is a signature spell of the game. It is solid, top of S tier. It lets you farm things that you otherwise would not be able to farm. It gives you so much mobility. It is super, super good. Like, um, it enables you to do so much more than you otherwise would be able to. Move so much further in a single turn. Um, it pushes the things that you can do to, like, a whole new level. And that whole new level deserves a solid S tier. Next up, we have Disguise. It does nothing. D tier. <laughs> I maybe should make an F tier just for the sake of disguise, but you know what? It may as well be along these tier. It will have some friends and the useless tier. Uh, the spell! The spell is uh, pretty good. Mm, some use cases for it is actually you can remove anti magic with it. Expert dispel removes anti magic, uh, making it so anti magic is not as oppressive because they would have to keep spamming it to sustain it if you keep matching it with cure but the spell costs less mana than anti magic though so maybe you can like dry his mana out it has that kind of use case it does the same thing as a cure towards your ally units well not the same because you actually lose your positive debu uh, buffs as well it can be used to dispel like the boss of the opponent at expert it just removes everything it can also be used to um, clay the moat of a tower which is kind of interesting, but not very usable still. Uh, the biggest uh, selling point is that expert this spell can remove anti magic, and removing anti magic is usually very valuable. But still, it is just usually an inferior cure, putting it at C tier. There we go. Next up, we had disrupting ray. Disrupting ray is most commonly used along with blind. You blind an enemy, then you like disrupting rate spam until they have like actually no defense, and then you slap them really hard. Um, that is the use case for it, and it's actually a lot of fun when, when you can use it, but you don't usually use it because it costs too much mana and it's not really effective enough. Um, also, the use cases is uh, too low. It is uh, C tier. I don't feel like it belongs at the D tier. It's usable. It's actually pretty commonly used, I would say. Next up, we have the Earthquake. Now, actually, surprisingly, I use the spell surprisingly many times. Um, sometimes the strategy for the opponent uh, to defeat you is actually to just keep you out. Like, yeah, you have your, like, giant power stack, and then you just can't get into the walls. They actually implode your ballista, and you're out. You can't do anything. And in those cases, Earthquake is your best friend. Now, in those cases, if you don't really have teleport, and your only power stack is walking, then you usually don't have the luxury of having um, some random tier 3 earth spell and the mana to cast it. Because otherwise you would be casting offensive spells and killing them that way anyway. So I still would say this, uh, the low cases are too low to actually put it at C tier even. Um, I still wanted to mention that it can be nichely used. It's not like as useless as something as Disguise. So next up we have the Fireball. Fireball is good thematically. It's like a fire spell. It deals damage. It, it, its selling point is the AoE. Um, but then you realize, wait, it's a magic arrow and I'm paying 16 mana for it? No! No, get the spell out of here. Nah, it stinks. Um, yeah, that's, that's what it usually is. Sorry, man, friend. Next up, we have the fire shield. Uh, fire shield is menacing when you fight the 3D Sultans, but then you're like, uh, damn, 3D Sultans are pretty good. I could turn Vikings into 3D Sultans. Then you realize it actually doesn't do anything. <laughs> um, solid detail. Enjoy. Uh, next up, the Firewall. Firewall basically has one use, okay? And that's when you're playing Luna. Luna can clear the entire map on Firewall, and on Luna it would be S tier, but not all heroes are Luna, so I would put it at C tier, okay? Um, the use case of Luna alone does not push the spell high enough for it to be anything more than a niche case scenario spell, which C tier kind of is, you know? Spells that are usable, nichely, and can be decent when you do use them. That is the C tier for me. Next up, we have the worst of the uh, control spells. Fly can be used, but um, it doesn't really do almost anything if you don't have expert air. And uh, expert having expert there for the sake of fly is like kind of a big commitment. Mm, not to mention, usually getting angel wings is about as hard <laughs> as getting the spell itself. It can be used in some niche scenarios, but it's not really that good. In Clash of Dragons, it actually just straight up wins you the game for free, but not every single game is a Clash of Dragons game, so 
the, the fact that it's um, a control spell alone puts it at beat there, but being the worst of the control spells doesn't really net it anything more than that, I would say. Next up, we have the force field. Really underused. This can be used to achieve many unwinnable battles, okay? It can create infinite damage scenarios. Um, it's really look good to abuse AI, especially 2 hex AI. Um, that's what it's basically for. Mm, but still, it's a very niche case use, and um, it's also like very, very man intensive. Whenever you use force field, you basically what you do is you use force field, you gain speed superiority, then you use force field. And then you cast something else, and then you reforce field, cast something else, reforce field. That's what you do. And that ends up being really man intensive. That means to get every super single other spell cast off that you want to get off, um, you're basically using 9 extra mana for every single time. So, because of its niche case use and also its high mana usage, um, it is Cita. A little bit higher than the others in Cita, though, I would say. Next up is the forgetfulness. Mmm. Forgetfulness is very much like one of the other spells that I covered in terms of its usage, okay? And that is the air shield, okay? Forgetfulness gives you a way to deal with ranged creatures, but there's better ways to deal with them, okay? And investing into... Like, listen, to deal with a ranged fight, you could get like a few angels, some fast units, or some tactics, or expert haste, you know? And you're, you're good to go. You're good to go. They're not gonna do that much to you, okay? You're fine. Or... Or you could go for the alternative route of, oh, you know, let's get ourselves some water magics. That's exactly what we want, right? Then we have to get wisdom. Hell yeah, water wisdom? We're building a good here already, right? Um, then next up, we have to dig for some random tier 3 spell. Then we have to use our mana pool to expert forgetfulness uh, the opponent. And then we can do the range fight, okay? unacceptably high investment for the sake of dealing with the range fights when you like randomly walk into a water book and you already have water magic it can be decent but um no um there's way better the uh, ways to deal with ranged creatures and so it is c -tail. bottom of c -tail. i think it's still a little bit better than the detail next up we have fortune fortune you basically cast it when you have like a hero that starts with fortune and there's literally nothing else in your spell books to your fortune and you pray that you get some damage out of it okay that is the only use case for it and uh usually you don't get any damage out from it so you just wasted your mana <laughs> enjoy detail then we have frenzy frenzy is a cool spell like it turns your Creatures into a super glass cannon. It gives them like infinite damage, but if they're touched, they die for that single turn. It also is like a very high cost mana cost, and also it's a tier four spell, so it's not that easy to get. It is most commonly used uh, in, in infinite damage combos or one shots, where you blind somebody, then you like disrupting raid, disrupting raid, disrupting raid, then you frenzy your unit up, and then you slap him really hard, and they die, and it's really enjoyable. Actually, I would I would suggest you try that at least once. Um, seeing like 10k damage on your bar, like, damn, nice. Um, cool spell, I would put it at beat there. Next up, uh, Ring of Frost. Now, this is Fireball, except it's a donut. Lol. <laughs> um, next up, we have Haste. Um, Haste is one of the... Listen, in Heroes of Modern Magic 3, you, we have to know something, okay? Speed is really good because of the weight mechanics. You can basically kite forever, you can not get hit, you can take very favorable type of fights if you are, are speeding the opponent. So anything that is going to be influencing the speed of units is going to be really, really good in Heroes of Mind Magic 3. And Haste is no exception. It is S tier. Super good. It sells air magic on its own already. Like, the reason air magic is considered good is because Haste exists. That's how good it is, okay? Next up, we have Hypnotize. A really neat spell, again. But really, really cool! Actually, I got... Um, in one of the games that I played up against Hellite, I got, like, ragdolled, okay? He owned me. He's a really good player. Um, and I learned something. He stole my cast and my speed superiority by hypnotizing my Serpent Fly. And I didn't know what to do. And it was really, really powerful. 
So it is most commonly used in late game PvP scenario to steal away the first cast. You know, um, usually the way that people cast uh, on the f uh, first in the in the fight is by having like a really fast creature, and usually don't have the power stack of the fast creature. You just have like one single off fast creature, one archangel, one phoenix, one uh, dragonfly, mm, something like that. So they're usually in hypnotized range, and if you hypnotize it, then you basically steal the first cast from the opponent, making you be able to set up double cast and stuff like that, and you can't even kill it off that easily either. It's really, really potent and really good. You can set up some sick combos with this and make some really creative good plays. I uh, learned this from Hellite, credits to him, and because of him, I respect the spell. Enough to put it at B tier. Before that game versus Hellite, I probably would have put it at D tier. So there we go. Um, next up, uh, we have the Ice Bolt. Ice Bolt is actually really pretty good. It's some mana efficient damage that you can spam. It's pretty easy to get. Um, it's it's a very, very game-defining kind of spell, you know? It's like one of your bread and butter abilities in the game for damage for your early game spellcasters and such. It is beat there. Pretty usable, pretty decent, nothing special. There we go. Next we have the big daddy of damage and flush it itself! Um in Shadow of Death, it used to have the animation of just shitting on someone, which is pretty accurate of what you do when you actually use the spell. Um, in Horn of the Abyss, we have the more awesome BAM implosion, okay? You actually implode someone, and it's still really enjoyable. Um, it is S tier. It is the best damaging spell in the game, and most usually the best go-to cast in the game as well. Mm, it doesn't really actually require earth magic to be able to be cast at high efficiency because the scaling is really ridiculous So if you just have some power you can cast it already So it's actually it doesn't require that much investment of course getting a level 5 spell is not that easy But there's the herb book, there's the spell binder set um, So you know there's ways to actually cheat to your, towards it and the moment that you get it You're like way more powerful way more potent in the final battle. It's really really good Next up we have the inferno. What if we had the fireball? But made it harder to get, and we have the and we had it cost more mana. Bam, <laughs> that's what you would get. Um, so there we go. <laughs> uh, next up is landmine. Landmine reminds me of uh, also a very specific match. Okay, uh, once upon a time I had a huge behemoth stack, and I was chasing my opponent around. It was Green Tea, by the way, another Lithuanian awesome player, by the way, and uh, he berserked me. And then I was, uh, and he slowed me, okay? So I slowed on Berserk, and the way that Berserk works is that I chase an opponent, and until they hit something, with my Berserk Behemoth in this case, I will actually not be able to do anything else. Like, I can't, I can't do anything. So then he, after Berserking me, what he did is he cast Landmine, and then I just walked for all the mines. And the battlefield was like a circle kind of uh, the terrain. So I just was going around in a circle on my behemoth stack, just picking up landmines. And it's actually really cost effective damage per mana point if you actually go to the gold, to the landmines, which I didn't really have an option not to. So in infinite damage um, scenarios, it actually is pretty good. Pretty cost effective, really. So I would put it at C tier. It is um, niche, it's not very often used, but it can be cool, it can be. Next we have the Lightning Bolt, very much like Lightning Bolt, it is your bread and butter, early game, caster ability, to do damage. Mm, solid C tier, no, no, wait, no, 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 I meant B tier. There we go. I would say it's better than Ice Bolt because it has more tempo, because it does, um, the, its damage is more straight, um, front loaded. Does more damage, uh, but costs more mana, of course. The Ice Bolt. Next is the Magic Mirror. The Bane of Tier 5 spells. Whenever you go for like a big scroll fight, you end up finding a Tier 5 scroll. Whenever you build your Tier 5, whenever you research your Tier 5, this is what you most hate to see. <laughs> this is unusably bad. In some meme scenarios, it can do something, but it's a meme scenario, so it probably doesn't really matter too much. Um, it has no real competitive use, it has no real use altogether. It is a failure of a spell, and it plagues the entire tier 5 skill set. D tier! There we go. Next up is a Meteor Shower, one of the big four of damaging spells alongside Chain Lightning, Implosion, and Ar Armageddon. It is, um, I would say, 
better than Chain Lightning. It is namely worse usually in PvP battles because you want to deal more damage to a single stack rather than have it spread out. And Chain Lightning actually does a better job at that because it deals more damage to the first target than uh, the Meteor Shower would. But Meteor Shower is way more mana cost efficient and also way better in most PvE scenarios, you know, fighting monsters, creatures, and so on. Uh, because of that, it places higher than Chain Lightning, putting it at low S tier. But still, really good ability. Um, like an Aislinn with this can solo the entire map, of course. It's amazing. Next is Murph. Mm, the only use cases for this is just praying my genies to Murph my pile stack so I don't miss morale on them. Um, <laughs> apart from that, I don't really see any use of it. Um, you almost never cast it. It's uh, a tier 3 spell. Tier 3 spells are usually notoriously bad. This is no exception to that. Um, having some extra morale is not... It's not good enough to use your cast for, and also it's from water magic, so for it to be good, you need to invest in something bad already, making it even worse. I would say it is maybe not as horrible as the D tier spell, so I would put it at like bottom C. Because, you know, you're kind of happy when Genius cast it, because it's, it's decent in that use case, but only in that use case. Next is Misfortune. Hmm. Actually, Mana Slug is a really, really good defensive layer to your creatures. Whenever you get, like, a Minus 2 Luck from your Shaman's Puppet, its um, use is actually really relevant throughout the game. Um, really good, really solid. Because of that, it's actually not that bad. I mean, Minus Luck is not that bad, but Misfortune requires too much investment to actually get that effect off, so making it uh, pretty much like Murph, it is, like, bottom C there. Um, whenever you get this off of the Armor of the Damned, then it's kind of decent, but apart from that, nah. Nah, 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 nah. Next up, we have Prayer. This is the basically the selling point of the Water Magics, but the fact that you have to go Water Magics to get this makes it pretty bad, okay? Um, its biggest use case is basically Haste, okay? But what if... Haze gave one less speed. You have to invest into a bad school of magic for the sake of it. It was a tier 4, so it's hard to get. And it costs a ludicrous amount of mana. <laughs> okay? So, it's like a super horrible haste. You get some stats for it, but the stats don't make up for the uh, downsides of it. It is still the sound point of water. And when you, de when you decast it in the final battle, it's kind of cool. Actually, pretty impactful. There is one better thing about prayer rather than haste. Um, because if you get slowed while prayered, your haste doesn't get dispelled. So, it's a safer cast than haste. So, yeah. It's decent. But, not good enough to be higher. Sorry, Lunas fans, I know. I, I, I know. It, it's tough, but it is how it is. Next up, we have Precision. It is very much like Murph, okay? If your genie's casted on your power stack, you're like, eh, okay. But you're never gonna cast this yourself, okay? Unless you're playing like Zubin and you didn't go to a Mage Guild and this is the only spell you have, then you might cast it on your few orcs in the early game of Stronghold. <laughs> Apart from that, probably most people never cast it. Um, so yeah, because of that, it is D tier. Uh, protect from air. Uh, it has some use cases, when, but it would have to be stacked usually with protect from earth. First of all, you would protect Earth, then you would protect Air as a second cast, and then you would be kind of immune to most of the good damage of spells, which is kind of cool, but then again, you usually don't have more than two power stacks, so you're better off casting like two anti magics, but if you don't have... It's bad! <laughs> okay, it's bad, I'm sorry, it doesn't do anything, it's D. Even if you could, like, make a very superficial use case scenario for it, that's not good enough to push it anything above D there. So there we go. Next up, we have Protect from Earth. Now, this is a big cast. Um, when the armies get so ridiculous that you actually have a bunch of a bunch of good stacks instead of your one good stack, then this is your go-to cast. You actually get to protect most of your army against the biggest spells in the game. Implosion and Meteor Shower, really good. Um, if the opponent doesn't have Chain Lightning, he actually doesn't really have a way to deal damage to you in terms of spells. Uh, putting it at a solid beat there. Protect from Fire. Really, really good combo with um, Armageddon. A mage with a, a fire book can actually protect from fire and an armor the opponent to death. And it's more strong than you, feel, you would think. 
a very potent mid-game strategy. In late game it wouldn't really fly, because there's way too many ways to counter that. Uh, but in mid-game it can be used. Uh, putting a uh, protection from fire at Cite. Sounds very good, but actually has use cases. Um, nobody cares about a water spell flying their way. There was once an hour when I played Meekick, and he, like, magic arrow spammed me, and I kind of wanted to not take as much damage from the water magic, uh, from the magic arrow spam, so I used it, but <laughs> I regret using it anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Next up, we have, um, Quicksand. Now, in a world where slow doesn't exist, it's actually good! Okay, um, MKC has a template, Jeebus Outcast, and Jeebus Outcast, one of the... Uh, Notable things is that many of the good spells are banned, uh, making you have to rely on other things instead, and slow is of course one of the banned things. Uh, because of that, you usually use quicksand as an alternative, and damn is it good when it's actually used! It's not bad at all. In a world where slow doesn't exist, I would say it's a, maybe even A tier. Uh, but since we don't live in that world right now, it is C tier. There we go. Next up we have Remove Obstacle. A meme spell that you use to flex on the opponents. It's pretty good on flexing on the opponents, but if it doesn't do anything else, it is D tier. So there you go. Next up is the Resurrection. The core spell of the game. One that you uh thus that you search for, you dig for. This enables you to take Utopias for free. This you take any fights without losses if you have enough mana, earth magic, and the spell. While it does sound like a lot of investment, the payoff that you get from it is Absolutely insane. Super good. Really, really nice. One of the best spells in the game. Solid S tier. Wait, actually, I should reorganize this. I would say it is like so. Yeah, this seems more like it. Sacrifice. Mm, well, Sacrifice is a meme skill. Very much like Meteor Shower. Uh, no, very much like Magic Mirror. You never want to see it in your Mage Guild or in your scroll or wherever else. Despite this, it's actually kind of usable. If you just take some meat and you have like a scroll for it, you can actually use it to save your power stack. You know, because it doesn't require fire magic for the units to persist. So if you have like a spell bonus that, you have a way to preserve your army. So because it has some use cases, it's not like unusable like D there. It has its niche use cases. Let's reposition ourselves. <clears throat> Next up, we have Scuttleboat, okay, and Scuttleboat, it's, I don't know, maybe in campaigns it could be like somewhat good, somewhat decent, but I just don't really see it, I don't see it, I never use the spell, it's whatever, so there we go, D tier, solid D tier, it belongs there. Um, next we have Shield, really amazing ability, okay. 30 less damage, 30% uh, less damage taken, okay? Off of this, you can tank dopes, you can tank whatever. It, it doesn't sound like that much, but when you use it and you actually tank damage, it feels so much better, so impactful, really good. Sells Earth Magic even more than they're already sold. It is S tier. Amazing ability. Magic Arrow, the core ability of the game. Like, one of the most um, iconic abilities of the game, really. Uh, because of that, despite it not being that good, I feel like it belongs in low beat there. It's your core ability that you cast uh, on almost every single fight. It is really, really solid. Very cool. Next up, we have Slayer. Mm. In the history of the game, the only time I cast Slayer was though when my genie's casted. Um, to self-cast it, I'm pretty much never using, okay? Um, it's a... Tier 4 spell, it requires a lot of mana to cast, um, and the payoff is not even that huge. So because of that, it is D tier. It is pretty much unusable. It is nice on paper, There's, like having um ability that counts specific types of creatures is kind of cool thematically, but it is just too weak to actually be used properly. Next is slow. Uh, most people should already know that it belongs in S tier. It is very game defining, okay? Very game defining. It got nerfed and horned the abyss, by the way, to slow anything for one less damage. So the old equation plus one is the current equation, okay? So it is not as oppressive and abusive as it used to be, 
Uh, but still, this is what lets you do undoable fights otherwise, and what enables um, high tempo playstyles to be a thing. Well, you don't need it necessarily, but if you have it, it like enables you to do like far more than you could have ever done otherwise. Next up is Sorrow. I would say Sorrow is not entirely unusable. It's like really high investment and it doesn't really do that much, but it can be decent. Um, I would say if you're doing like a Berserk, infinite damage combo, one of the only things that could break it is morale. And in that case, you can get rid of morale with um, Sorrow. That would be like the most standard use case for it. Um, but yeah, it doesn't do that much. So, And it's a lot of investment for nothing as well. So it is CT. Then up a stone skin. Stone skin is like shield, but it also applies to ranged creatures. I mean, it prevents range damage from hitting you aside, unlike shield. So you would think it's better than shield, but no, the value is still like half of shield. Because of that, it is high A tier. It is really, really good. If you shield and stone skin your creatures, you're gonna be like not taking damage. It's OP, okay? Really good. But uh, this is where stone skin belongs, in my opinion. Next up, we have all the elementals. The first of which is the air elemental. I think elementals are really, really good. They can um, hit and run and uh, farm topes. Um, so yeah, because of that, um, and they can also like solo in uh, final battles as well. They are the payoff of a mage. Okay, if you're like playing throughout the entire. Uh, game as a mage, um, this is your end game payoff, having the access to elementals and lots of them. So they are solid, at least A tier. I would say your elemental is um, low A tier because they are vulnerable to some high damage spells, they don't have a lot of HP, and you usually summon elementals just for them to be that HP meat shield for you. And elementals don't really do a good job at it. Um, that's why they're A tier. Next up is you have summon boat. Summon Boat is really, really good. It lets you actually navigate uh, water maps. It is very essential to water maps entirely. Um, like, it's not like a very game-defining spell, but it is B tier at least, I think. Next up, we have Summon Earth Elemental. What a powerhouse of an ability. The best elementals in the game. Um, they are native to the best school of magic in the game that you would like to have anyway. So they don't require that much investment because you're going for that, uh, uh, you know, you're going for the air spells anyway, right? And they are a big, big payout. They are the meatiest of the elementals. They're really good. Um, putting them solidly in the S tier. Next up of the fire elementals. Fire elementals actually don't have as good synergy with the uh, Armageddon as earth elementals do anyway, despite them being fire. And they also require a more niche school of magic to actually use compared to earth elementals anyway. Putting them about mid A tier. And next is the water elemental. Uh, these don't really have anything. Like you see air elementals have speed at least. And they're like from air magics. Which you kind of want to have anyway. Um, fire elementals are pretty decent along with Armageddon. They have their use cases as well. They're kind of beefy too. Water elementals are kind of squishy. They are slow. They are from a very undesirable school of magic. They are C tier. They're... Not that good. No, actually, I would say bottom beat there. Bottom beat there seems better for those. Delaport! You ever had your Hydra stack and they're never able to hit anything? Or your Skeleton stack is almost per perma slowed and they can't reach anything despite being able to one shot? Well, then look no further than Delaport! Uh, it is very bad. It requires a lot of mana unless you have water magic, which you don't really want to have anyway. Um, so it's not like a good standalone spell, not considering it's a uh, school of magic. So, it's not that good. <laughs> and because it's not that good, it I think it belongs in seat there. Next up, we have a very unique spell. Titan's Lightning Bolt deals a flat rate of 600 damage. And it also prints spellbooks, by the way. If you get the spell in your spellbook for even a moment, then you will have a spellbook for the rest of the game. So, it's actually having Titan's Thunder for the sake of the spell also gives you a spellbook, which is... Actually pretty interesting, could be good. If you find a prison, that prison hero having immediately access to the to your spellbook is very powerful. Mm, if you can use it, if you can get it, then it's actually really, really good. A, I think it is bottom of A tier. And also the fact that it costs no mana is also like a really high selling point. Mm. Next up is the down portal. Um, 
pretty much a needed spell to play any control game ever. And one of the first things you go for when you actually build a mage guild. It is very, very, very good. It is top of S tier. For Jupiter's Cross, this actually would be way lower. But I'm like trying to think of spells uh, for more than just Jupiter's Cross alone. That's why it is S tier. There we go. Next up is View Air. Uh, wait, where's my View Air? Hmm. Okay, View Air. Um, is a really, really good ability itself, okay? It uh, lets you know where the opponents are, what they're doing, and it's really, really good. Uh, because of that, it is A tier. It is uh, very needed for control type of games. It is very, very good for mirror games, so you know what your opponent is up to. You, you know, you can scout out something that your opponent found that you didn't, so you can actually match him as well. Very solid, indeed. Then, next up, we have Visions. Visions is also an amazing ability um it uh, was actually pretty weak back in the days when diplomacy was a thing but ever since the 2020 new, new year's patch uh diplomacy became available and visions is the core way you use diplomacy because you can actually see what they're joining and for how much gold from way afar so you can make better decisions and actually not waste your time uh because of this i would say it is solid a tier minus um, pretty interesting. I really like the spell. I think it's very cool, actually. Next up, we have Water Walk. Um, it's bad. It's Water School of Magic, and, uh, it's a lot of mana, and you need a lot of investment to get it, and the payoff is pretty low anyway. So, it is D tier. It is very bad. And next is Weakness. Weakness is one of the payoffs of Water Magic. It's actually pretty good in the final battle scenario if you can actually cast it. If you can like stack other type of buffs for yourself and other debuffs for your opponent, you can actually get your units to be quite a bit more significantly powerful. But it is a very low temple cost and it's hard to make use of. It is C tier. So that is my magic tier list for heroes of modern magic free. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll try to respond. Um, do you agree with mine? Maybe uh, what would you change? Thanks for watching. And till next time. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao.